Hello, this is Dr. Carlo Oyer, emergency physician and founder of edexitvideo.com, a website that provides free medical education videos about emergency room related diagnosis. In this video, we're going to be talking about nonspecific abdominal pain. Nonspecific abdominal pain is defined as pain for which no immediate cause can be found during the acute admission to the hospital and specifically does not require surgical intervention. NSAP may be self-limiting and accounts for 13 to 40 percent of all surgical admissions. The abdomen is the area of the body between the pit of the stomach, the siphoid process in the epigastrium, and all the way down to the pelvis. It contains many organs like the liver, gallbladder, pancreas, kidney, stomach, small and large bowel, bladder, female reproductive organs, etc. The abdomen can be subdivided into regions, the picture on the left, and into quadrants, the picture on the right, to help standardize the description of the location of the pain between providers. The location of the pain will help drive the clinician's differential diagnosis and therefore the test needed. Please feel free to pause this video to look in detail at the picture of the left as the location of the pain suggests different diagnosis. The most frequent cause of nonspecific abdominal pain ends up being gastroenteritis, 13%, irritable bowel syndrome, 8%, urinary tract problems, inflammation of the stomach, and constipation. So how will the clinician figure out what is wrong with you? Except for the most simple of cases, if you present to the emergency department with abdominal pain, and left with a diagnosis of nonspecific abdominal pain, then most surely at least blood tests were performed on you. Blood tests help physicians rule in or rule out some diseases or reassure us that certain diseases are not present at the time of evaluation. The CBC, or complete blood count, measures the white blood cell count, the WBC, which is high or low, can indicate the presence or absence of infection. The hemoglobin and hematocrit, the H and H, which tells how red your blood really is, and the platelets, which are the sticky cells that help with clotting. Unless you are bleeding, it is the WBC, the white blood cell, can the most important part of this test when you present with abdominal pain. A high WBC increases our suspicion of an active infection, and a normal or low white blood cell count, although not a hundred percent, certainly reassures the clinician that there is no infection. The CMP, or Complete Metabolic Panel, checks your electrolytes, salts in the body like sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, etc., your acid-base status, the carbon dioxide level, and your kidney function, the BUN and creatinine, but also checks blood sugar as well as your liver enzymes. When you present with unspecified abdominal pain, we usually include a lipase test. This checks for inflammation or infection of the pancreas. <coughs> The urinalysis will be ordered to check the urine for signs of dehydration, signs of infection, and the presence or absence of blood. If you are a female of childbearing age, a pregnancy test will also be ordered. Imaging studies, the KUB, kidneys, ureter, and bladder, is a plain x-ray of the abdomen. This test is of little value in modern medicine. Yes, it can pick up some calcifications to signify kidney, gallbladder, or bladder stones, but it is not a very sensitive test. That means it can miss many of them. It can also show bowel obstruction or perforated bowel. This is clearly evident on an x-ray, and these two indications are the main reasons this study is still ordered today. However, most surgeons and physicians who will be caring for the patient with these two diagnoses will almost always require a CT scan to better define the anatomy and details of the process. This is why, if this test is done, it is usually followed with a CT scan or computer tomography test um, anyway. The CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, with or without contrast, is essentially a highly detailed x-ray series of the abdomen. It allows the clinician to see the anatomy of internal organs with great detail, far superior than plain x-rays. This is why it has become standard practice in the workup of nonspecific abdominal pain. With or without contrast? Well, for most acute abdominal pain presentations in the emergency department, IV contrast is not necessary. 
but for the chronic or unspecified abdominal pains, it gives us added image quality that helps picking up more subtle abnormalities, making it easier for the radiologist and the clinician to make the right diagnosis. Not every test can pick up every disease process. A CT scan is very good at major organs and bowel, but not as good at looking at kidneys, gallbladder, and ovaries, especially cystic structures. This is why sometimes we order ultrasounds even though a CT scan failed to show any abnormalities. The abdominal MRI or magnetic resonance imaging of the abdomen provides detail better than CT scans or ultrasounds combined. However, due to the cost and time-consuming nature of the test, it is rarely to order this test in the emergency department. Usually, if an MRI of the abdomen is being considered, then consultation with a surgeon or specialist and or admission to the hospital is also warranted. Even after adequate and comprehensive tests in the emergency department, up to 40% who present to the emergency department with non-specific abdominal pain leave the emergency department with no specific diagnosis. This is equally frustrating to the emergency physician as much as it is to the patient, who sadly leaves the emergency department feeling as if nothing was accomplished. Let me tell you something. Even though we did not make a specific diagnosis, we feel confident that after the evaluation, you do not have a life-threatening condition. Otherwise, we will not be discharging you home. We will make attempts to refer you for follow-up evaluations where the workup uh, that we started in the emergency department can be completed and studies that are not routinely done in the emergency department setting can be performed. We will most likely give you prescriptions to alleviate your symptoms. It is not that we think that you're here just to get pain pills, but that we do not want you to be in pain while the proper workup and follow-up occurs. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. It is customary to ask the patient to follow up in less than 24 hours, whether it be with the primary doctor or to return to the emergency department for repeat abdominal exam and even repeat part or some of the workup that was done in the initial visit. Especially if we cannot arrange a follow-up with your primary care provider or a specialist, either be gastroenterologist, surgeons, or OBGYN. Most nonspecific abdominal pains will go away on their own without ever having made a specific diagnosis. But if the condition matures, the symptoms may become more severe and clinical signs and symptoms may appear that were subclinical or not even present at the time of the initial evaluation. Blood work that was nonspecific or negative might become positive over time. You must, I must say it again, you must return to the ER if you are not completely better or if your condition is deteriorating in any way. For other videos like this video, please visit www.edexitvideo.com. But remember, these are educational videos and should never replace the care or attention of a medical healthcare professional.